Я несколько слов сначала на русском скажу, так что, во-первых, уважаемые друзья, мои хорошие дав давнишние друзья, мы друг друга много-много лет знаем уже, может, скоро уже 20 лет будем <laughs> вместе в либеральной интернационале и также европейские либеральные демократические и реформистические партии. Так что я поздравляю Яблоко, что вы сегодня организовали такое мероприятие. В этом году, получается, у Ильи уже было 8 марта 100-летие, 8 марта, то есть Международного женского дня. Вокруг этого дня тоже много обсуждают сейчас, надо ли такого специального для, для женщин раз только в год. Или, 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 может быть, этот день даже сам по себе как будто дискриминирует женщин. Но пока этот день существует, и мне лично, конечно, приятно получить много красивых цветов, цветов в этот день. Так, еще, конечно, от имени ЛДР, нашей Европейской либерально-демократической реформистической партии, я тоже вас... Приветствую. Сейчас я не являюсь членом бюро, но я была там многие-многие годы. И до с тех пор я помогаю, работаю партию, если там получаются какие-то вопросы по России или по других наших восточных соседям. И тоже я хочу вас поздравить от имени фракции либеральной демократической фракции Европейского парламента, где я являюсь членом, скоро уже два года, как я член этой фракции. И там же в Европарламенте, в моем фракции тоже я занимаюсь прежде всего и ответствую прежде всего по вопросам России. И еще... По выборах. Калина много говорила, что в Европе как будто все хорошо в вопросе в сфере гендера, но я бы так не сказала. Например, в моем стране, в Эстонии, в прошлое воскресенье у нас были парламентарские выборы. У нас в парламенте 101 человек, от них только выбирались 19 женщин. Это чуть меньше, чем 20%. И особенно странно, что моя партия, либеральная партия, партия реформистов, мы в этот раз получили только пять мест для женщин. И я сама тоже кандидировала, пока я останусь в Европарламенте, то есть это значит того, что у нас пока остается, наверное, четыре. Или может кто-то войдет в парламент попозже, как представительница того, которые станутся министрами, так что будет видно. Так, давайте тогда я пойду на английский язык и делаю этот доклад. Um, this, um, this, uh, this my, my, um, today's uh, uh, speech is about uh, the European experience in gender mainstreaming. And uh, I was actually very lucky to get this uh, uh, European study, uh, which was... Uh, uh, done quite recently. Uh, can you just go forward to the next uh, page? I don't have any techniques myself, so I need to uh, assistance from the young people there. Oh yes, this is just uh, to remind you some uh, uh, historical quotations, if I may say so, from uh, Sir Humphrey, whom we all know as, as uh, British uh, comics uh, from uh, the BBC series, yes, Minister, who used to say that the, the civil service must always have the right to appoint the best man for the job, regardless of sex. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's a quite uh, usual uh, also in, in many European states that uh, despite of uh, the lot of discussions and, and even quotas in many countries still in, in the, in the high-ranking positions we face men, and you will see immediately in this uh, survey, which was uh, done uh, recently by, by European studies. Can you please turn next page? I will just explain the methodology and now go next. Uh, what was uh, then um, uh, uh, 
under the uh, study by Europarameter. Uh, there was uh, then uh, the survey conducted uh, in face-to-face uh, -face at Respondent's House uh, and the fieldwork was done, as I said, recently in February, March this year. And uh, the population who was asked was um, 15 plus years old and uh, they, they covered uh, this um, uh, study uh, in all uh, 27 member states. And uh, the interviews, um, uh, you see the number is more than 26,000 uh, 700 people were asked. Can you go next? And then uh, the agenda, and next, which was um, uh, uh, covered, uh, were uh, divided into three parts. That uh, the first part will see that um, how women uh, and um, decision-making positions are looking like in the current uh, European countries, what kind of problems uh, women face uh, in uh, decision-making uh, positions or to get this decision-making process. Secondly, this study will see uh, inequalities between men and women. And the third uh, part of the study uh, is about the violence against women. So the first then, women and decision-making um, positions. Yes, go on. And yes, here you see. Uh, there is um, on the top there. There is the question: the, the obstacles facing women in reaching decision-making positions. Uh, what what kind of problems women face to get uh, the the uh, the, uh, uh, the high-ranking uh, positions? And um, and uh, also, if you uh, see that uh, the uh, women have the equal skill and qualifications with men. Uh, at the same time when they try to get the job in the big companies or uh, the senior, senior level of public administration or in political parties or small and medium-sized enterprises or community organizations, local levels, then, uh, then you see that, um, that those uh, who responded, uh, men and women, they are quite equal in their positions. Uh, in their answers that, uh, that the most of uh, men and women think that yes, this is the fact that uh, in Europe uh, women have the problems to get the high-ranking positions in, in everywhere, not only in big companies, not only in politi politics, but, but more or less in, in all level, perhaps a little less in, in the local and community level where, uh, when women are more um, uh, positioned, uh, well positioned. Can, can you go next? So the next um, uh, slide uh, shows that um, the measures to ensure women's access to decision-making positions, then uh, what, what should be done actually to, to change this um, uh, position, to, to improve the situation? And uh, here again, it's, it's very interesting that the whole study shows that, uh, that the men and women do not have the big differences of understanding the problem and also they don't have the big uh, differences uh, proposing uh, the possible uh, improvements or solutions on the situation. So, and uh, and mostly uh, you see that they um, they also rather like uh, uh, the encouraging uh, methods rather than uh, some kind of pressure or punishment, even um, uh, uh, some companies or or political bodies. Can you go next? Now. Uh, here, um, what are then the reasons, for example, concretely in politics, under-representation of women in politics? And, uh, and here uh, you see there are different reasons, and uh, I, I also fully agree myself with, with this uh, kind of uh, um, answers and the results of, of the answers. That, um, it's clear that, uh, as we already heard earlier today, that uh, the political world is dominated by men. Uh, and uh, this is the fact also in the European Parliament, for example, where we have 736 people as a members of the Parliament, when the, out of them we have uh, only 261 women. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's clear fact that, uh, that uh, not only in the member countries, but also on the European level, it's, it's exactly the same. And of course, the stereotypes which are existing, and uh, and a uh, lot of other uh, reasons uh, why uh, women are underrepresented in, in in politics. Can you go next, please? 
And uh, here this uh, is uh, the questioning, uh, what kind of measures uh, to be taken in order to get the better uh, representation of women in politics, um, uh, if uh, putting uh, in place uh, training and support measures, or uh, it's also interesting to see that uh, as it goes to the quotas, as in some countries, uh, especially in Nordic countries, there are quotas uh, uh, implemented, uh, still the, the majority of uh, public or at least those people, these 26,000 people who answered to these studies, they are quite uh, equal. You see like 18-19% think that only the quotas could, uh, could help uh, this uh, situation um, uh, to be improved. Can you go next please? And uh, here it's a uh, questioning that, uh, please can you get uh, the cameraman on the screen. Uh, these, um, these are the uh, reasons then why um, not uh, why women are not participating uh, in um, in the elections. What are the reasons? And um, it's very interesting that um, that uh, so many people answered that uh, they don't have enough uh, confidence on vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, to their political leaderships uh, and, uh, and I think that this is also a general uh, problem in, in, in all EU countries that uh, people, the citizens of the European Union uh, do not uh, uh, trust um, uh, that much their own domestic uh, politicians, uh, only 40% you see the, the, on the national level is the trust an average uh, size, but the European level only 29%. And this really clearly reflects also always in the elections of the European Parliament, where uh, normally the turnout is very low. There is a very low participation of, of the citizens who come and vote and in some countries only like 15-20% of people come to vote the European Parliament. So can you please go to the next? So now uh, we will see yes, the inequalities between uh, men and women, uh, some uh, figures uh, uh, which are uh, quite, uh, uh, quite a lot talking um, uh, by on, on behalf of themselves. So you see that um, these figures show clearly that uh, women are in, in, uh, in a worse situation in the uh, labor market and also uh, it's very uh, usual that in Europe especially women have the part-time job and the reason is definitely the family. If you have children it's, um, it's very, very difficult, uh, especially in older European countries like in France, in Germany, to combine your family life uh, with, with your uh, child care. And, uh, and of course, this euro, has may you, you have seen what I wear also, it shows. This is what, what we call in, uh, in Europe, this is the uh, woman's euro, which means that, you know, this is not full, but it's cut. And this is exactly the cut of this, that uh, uh, women in Europe normally, uh, in average, earn 17% less than, uh, than men. And in a um, number of countries, especially Eastern European, Central, uh, Central European countries, the, uh, the difference is even higher. So can you go to the next? So, and now here there are also the questioning what uh, can be done uh, that, uh, to improve then the situation for women to combine their jobs and, and the family lives. Um, uh, well, uh, it's, it's again, it's uh, quite uh, these um, measures what are provided uh, are supported quite similarly both by, by men and, and women to combine uh, their work to, to find uh, uh, and also to to, uh, in, to reduce the gap between the payments uh, between men and women. And it's it's interesting that uh, even if you see this uh, this uh, slide here, that in, it looks like everything is uh, is all right. Also, men say that yes, there is a gap. Yes, we we, we have to change the situation. But um, but uh, where are then the decisions? Why these decisions are not made? This is the question. Uh, 
because when we show earlier from the slides on the decision making level there are uh, the men are in majority either in companies or in politics and there are no decision done uh, to um, reduce uh, the, the, the gap uh, of the uh, payments. So can you go next? Um, Yes, and this is uh, quite in a similar uh, mood, um, uh, different uh, uh, proposals how to improve the uh, situation, including even the penalties uh, against the companies who do not respect the equal equality or equal opportunities. And again, people, you see, it's, uh, it's a, first of all, it's a very little supported as an idea, to introduce the punishments and again there is quite an equal understanding that uh, this measure probably do not really help but uh, mostly Europeans are looking uh, uh, towards uh, uh, of encouragement and training and, and uh, promoting uh, the women's positions in, in different levels of, of society. Could you go on? And now uh, next uh, we come to the uh, uh, next we come, could you, could you go on more? Uh, the violence against uh, women that um, and then and again yes there is one major uh, problem uh, in this field uh, still in the European legislation which means that if in one country uh, there is a court case uh, and judgment and a trial uh, and that there is a judgment uh, verdict um, on, um, on the uh, violation uh, against women, then uh, this uh, uh, court decision is not valid in another EU country. And uh, can you go next? Yes. Then uh, uh, this is also the questioning that uh, from, uh, from the point of view of Europeans, uh, there is a real uh, gap in the legislation and, and uh, on the, they are expecting that on the European level this should be also harmonized legislation, that it means that uh, if you are like uh, Italian men beating up your wife at home and then you get uh, the court penalty, uh, then uh, you should be also uh, uh, taken as, as a guilty in, in Germany or in Estonia as well, but uh, this is not the case so, 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 lo so far. Can you go further? And uh, here are then uh, some uh, measures proposed uh, what uh, could be done to eliminate violence against uh, women. Again, uh, to sharing the best practices uh, between uh, the member countries uh, also. It's very popular and I guess it is existing also in, in uh, Russia, in Moscow, the free line telephones where women can call in if there is a problem and then the, here it's interesting proposal that the European wide free phone number should be available and um, perhaps it's even useful that if uh, women, uh, especially perhaps in smaller countries, uh, are hesitating to call these uh, telephones, they could uh, call to the other country if, if they can, uh, of course, speak the language. Uh, this, this is again the European uh, issue that in, in every country we don't have a, uh, well, or actually we all use our national language, it's not so much a common language, uh, is not chosen. So can you go to the next please? And uh, here uh, I give you uh, simply uh, some uh, uh, figures now the current uh, situation of the European Parliament or actually through the history of the European Parliament since 52 when uh, it was uh, established only by six uh, member countries in that time and was not uh, uh, directly elected only since uh, 79. As you know, European Parliament is elected directly by citizens. And uh, immediately you see that uh, since uh, 79, uh, there has been increase um, uh, of uh, uh, women's participation in the European Parliament after the uh, direct elections. And now the, uh, the recent, uh, uh, the la last latest figure then in 2011, as you see we have 34.8% uh, uh, of women and I don't go to the details how much uh, they are now uh, um, delivered uh, uh, for the higher positions in the parliament, in the chairwomanships or, or in other leaderships. 
there, there is a clear data, and if somebody is interested in, you can always find it in the homepage of the European Parliament. Can you go next? Yes. And simply, there are some um, uh, positive examples, and uh, and uh, and uh, of course, Finland. Uh, uh, they have 62% uh, of uh, these Finnish uh, members of MEPs, we call uh, members of European Parliament MEPs, 62% uh, of their delegation, they are uh, women. And in Finland, in their national parliament, you see the representation of women is uh, 42%. In Sweden, uh, uh, respectively, 56 and 47 and um, in Estonia, this um, the national parliament, this 21% is from uh, the last uh, parliament before the last Sunday's election. Uh, now, as I said, it's, uh, it's, less, it's less than 20%. But um, our delegation in the European parliament uh, is a small one. We have only six members of, from Estonia uh, elected to the European parliament. And out of the six people, uh, uh, three are uh, women. So we are in this position, we are standing uh, pretty well, and, and they all belong, by the way, to the liberal group. So we, 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 we are in this, this way, we, we can be happy. And uh, yes, perhaps uh, this um, uh, less, um, uh, uh, or how to say, it, it's, it's also would uh, to see that in Malta, from Malta, for example, there there are there are no uh, female representation at all in the European Parliament, and uh, this is really the big question mark. If there is uh, if there are no any women in, in Malta, or what is the reason? The reason actually. So can you go next, please? And yes, yeah, here you can see that how the uh, distribution. Can you go next, please? <coughs> Uh, how the distribution uh, goes uh, between uh, uh, between the political groups. So this is always the techniques. <laughs> yes, here we are. Uh, you see that um, again, uh, our group, the, the liberal group, is uh, is in a pretty good position. Uh, but uh, European uh, Greens are, are even better position. They have fifty. Uh, three percent of um, of uh, seats uh, belong uh, then to to women, and the rest, uh, the other groups, they they have uh, much uh, already less representation. So, and then for conclusions, then um, can you go to the next? Um, oh, it's so small here on the screen that. Um, well, uh, in, in general, yes, uh, the, the previous survey, what you have seen, that shows that uh, concerning all questions related uh, to gender equality, men and women uh, tended to uh, react uh, more or less the same way. And uh, we can wonder whether this uh, 100th anniversary of the International Women's Day should not be considered a real social step forward that contributes to tackle or reduce effectively the, the gender gap. And uh, uh, I think that uh, the, uh, the discussions uh, about the gender issue are, are admitted so broadly in European societies that uh, it has not um, uh, stayed only the, the women issue or the female issue. Even, I would say even 20 years ago, the situation was uh, pretty different. And I think that if this kind of survey would, could have been done uh, 20 years ago, then um, the results uh, in answers was probably quite uh, different. But as long now, uh, uh, especially uh, since the beginning of 90s, when the United Nations took the lead to promote the gender issue uh, during these 20 years that so, so much has been discussed in, in European societies in order to improve the situation. And that really reflects now in the answers that also men, they, they understand the issues and the problems in in very, very similar way as, as women uh, see the problems. And uh, to, uh, to, to end, um, or to conclu conclude uh, in positive mood, I, I am optimist and I would say that perhaps in the next 10, 20 years, also the decisions 
uh, made by men or the majority of men in politics uh, are uh, reflecting then uh, the situation and, and really they are meeting uh, the needs uh, or the, the problems what, uh, what uh, women raise uh, in the society. Either it comes to the gap of the salaries or it comes to the uh, sheer uh, the positions, um, uh, high level positions uh, in politics, in companies or in the local level. So thank you very much uh, for your attention and I wish uh, the, all, all of us a very successful uh, conference today. Thank you very much.